The Verdict, a sidebar production, hosted by Kent Myers and Mick Cornett. As a part of its traditional and continuing commitment to public and community service, Crow and Dunleavy sponsors The Verdict. Also sponsored by Delta Dental, Oklahoma Lawyers for Children, and C.H. Guernsey and Company. Each week on The Verdict, we present an objective discussion of contemporary and legal issues, topical issues that will affect Oklahomans in their daily lives. The Verdict, a sidebar production. And welcome to The Verdict. I'm Mick Cornett, and I am joined here, as always, by one of Oklahoma's top legal experts, Kent Myers. Kent, today a special guest. Special guest. We want to, today to introduce to our viewers, once again, Lieutenant Governor Mary Fallon. Uh, last week, as our viewers know, we had on uh, Laura Boyd, who is the Democratic candidate for Lieutenant Governor, and gave her an opportunity to present information that she thought was of interest, uh, would be of interest to our viewers. And we're giving the same opportunity this Sunday uh, to the incumbent Lieutenant Governor, uh, Mary Fallon. She's been kind enough to join us today. Uh, there are going to be a lot of discussion about issues that are important to Oklahomans, issues relating to the Lieutenant Governor's office and what the duties are and how they are to be carried out. I think it will be an interesting show, and I want to encourage our viewers and notify them that after this show is over, they can get to our website, which we'll talk more about at the last, and vote. Do they vote for Lieutenant Governor Mary Fallon for Lieutenant Governor, or do they vote for the Democratic uh, candidate, uh, Laura Boyd, or do they vote for either of the two independent candidates, and I want to mention there are two, uh, Billy McGuire of Edmond and Elmer Easy Million of Norman running as independents. Role of uh, Lieutenant Governor almost self-defined as the Lieutenant Governor is able to pick their spots, but also would succeed the Governor of the state if for some reason the Governor could no longer serve. Yes, has very specific uh, statutory duties in some respects. In other respects, it's rather uh, doing what needs to be done, but always is that that possibility that that person that you elect lieutenant governor will someday uh, in, a, in a tragic circumstance become the governor of the state of Oklahoma and we got to make sure ob always that that person is ready and willing to serve. Well elections are coming up and we want to offer you a chance to better know the candidates. Lieutenant Governor Mary Fallon is our guest today. We'll talk to her when we return. You're watching The Verdict with Mick Cornett and Kent Myers. The Journal Record is pleased to be a sponsor of The Verdict. The Journal Record, since 1903, the best source of Oklahoma business news and legal information. The Verdict is pleased to have as a sponsor C.H. Guernsey & Company, providing architectural and engineering services to clients throughout the U.S. and around the world. And Blankenship has stopped at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play. Leading at fourth and seven on the Tiger 46-yard line. 38 seconds on the clock, the Tigers have no choice but to go uh -huh. Wiggins in to do the kicking. Here's the snap. And the kick is away. All children deserve a life of hope and love. But sometimes they experience a life of pain, neglect, and abuse. When that happens, each child deserves all of the quality assistance and representation that can be offered in our legal system. Oklahoma Lawyers for Children has over 350 of the best attorneys and volunteers in Oklahoma County who donate their time and services to represent children. For more information, call 405-23-CHILD. Oklahoma Lawyers for Children helping to bring hope and love back to the lives of abused children. American Express Tax and Business Services. We're accountants. We do taxes, business valuations, estate planning, and consulting. And we're right here in Oklahoma, working with the owners of small and medium-sized businesses. Steve Wilsey and Stuart Meyer have the resources and the experience. American Express Tax and Business Services. In Oklahoma City, the phone number is 405-843-5311. I'd like to offer my most sincere congratulations to the firm 
of Crow and Dunlavey, the employees and attorneys, uh, profound contributions to the state of Oklahoma for this past century, and I wish you well for this coming century. Thank you. Happy anniversary, Crow Dunleavy, and thank you for 100 years of providing quality legal service to the state of Oklahoma. We wish you much continued success and growth. And welcome back to The Verdict. Mick Cornett with Kent Myers is going to introduce our guests. Yes, we're pleased to welcome back to The Verdict Lieutenant Governor Mary Fallon, the Lieutenant Governor of the State of Oklahoma. I want to spend just a minute telling you a little bit about her. In 1994, she was the first uh, woman and the first Republican elected Lieutenant Governor of the State of Oklahoma. Grew up in Tecumseh, Oklahoma, gra a graduate of Oklahoma State University. Was a member of the Oklahoma House of Representatives from uh, 90 to 94 and then was elected lieutenant governor. In 2000, uh, she, uh, presiding over the Senate, forced the first roll call vote in 25 years in the Oklahoma Senate on the issue of right to work, which of course subsequently was uh, favorably reported out to the people and favorably uh, passed on a vote. But perhaps most importantly, she's the mother of a son and a daughter. Lieutenant Governor, welcome to the verdict. Well, thank you. Glad to be here with you. And you're right, that is my most important job. <laughs> thank you. I love being Lieutenant Governor, but being a mother is wonderful. I didn't say in the opening, and I didn't say in your introduction, because I wanted the viewers to hear it from you, but they may be surprised to find you've been Governor for approximately two years <laughs> during your eight-year term as Lieutenant Governor. And, How did that happen? And see, it all went just fine, didn't it? <laughs> well, that's right. Well, you know, that is one of the most important jobs of the Lieutenant Governor is to be able to uh, fulfill the role of Governor if the Governor sh should need to leave the state. And Governor Keating does have business out of state that he has to attend to or if the governor should become incapacitated or resign from office. And that's why it's very important that you have a qualified lieutenant governor who understands the issues and will actually support the things that you think are important. Well, you have then been the lieutenant governor six years and governor two eight years. years. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes, you're right. Sure. Yeah, when you add the two together, it yeah, comes up to right. eight. Yes. So you've got two years' experience as being governor. That's right. I do. Well, <laughs> And uh, it went just fine. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> let me ask you a question about something that is getting a lot of discussion in your race and that is uh, the nursing home bill of rights that your opponent has suggested but more importantly uh, what is the plight if any of, uh, of people in nursing homes today in Oklahoma do they need more protection under the law than they have today well and that's a good question and boy I tell you our seniors are so important to me I, I have a mother who's in a nursing home and I'm her guardian. I provide and take care of her. I pay her bills. I make sure her medical care is being delivered. I make sure she's safe in the nursing home and, and uh, take care of her estate, her home, all those things to do when you're taking care of an elderly parent. And she's not elderly, by the way. She's young. And then I also have a grandmother who's uh, going to be 97 on Halloween Day. And she lives at home and she takes care of herself. And it's just done wonderful. So seniors are near and dear to my heart because I live it. It's, it's a personal issue to me. I live it every day. And by the way, it's hard being a mother and balancing taking care of a, of a senior too. And I want our seniors to be protected. I want them to be safe. I understand those issues because it, it hits home with me. I will tell you that the Bill of Rights that was proposed, all those things are current law. <laughs> it's nothing new. It's, it's all what's provided for. You know, you can't abuse your seniors. You, you can't restrict them from seeing their families in nursing when they're in a nursing home. You know, all those things are provided for by law. And actually, we have 20 different agencies or nonprofit nonprofit organizations that deal with senior issues in abuse and neglect and and uh, you know medical care or, or meals on wheels all those things are currently in place so what we really need to do is make sure that all those different agencies those nonprofit profit groups are doing what they say they're going to do which I think they do a good job coordination among them and then is important coordination is very very important I will tell you that that the one place where where we do differ on issues you know having a mother in a nursing home uh, there was a piece of legislation that my opponent ran for three years in the legislature when, when I was there that would allow release convicted felons to work in nursing homes and I do not want to release convicted felon working in a nursing home with my mother and I take it that didn't pass it didn't pass in fact it only got two votes her vote and one other vote uh, 
Let me change the subject just a minute. Uh, there isn't a, a day goes by in the newspaper or on television we don't read about or hear about the plight of the Oklahoma budget. Uh, money being tight, agencies being asked to cut back. I know one of your, one of your principal uh, platforms and goals is long-term economic development in Oklahoma, which of course would benefit the entire state. How do you view this, sh what we hope is a short-term uh, money crunch? Well, what, I, what should we do about it? That, that's a good point because that it will be one of the big challenges for the new governor. It'll be a big challenge for me if I'm reelected as lieutenant governor. It'll be a big challenge for the legislature is how do we handle the financial crunch that we're under right now as a state. And I hope it will be short term. I hope it'll just be less than a year. But we are projected to have about a $213 million budget shortfall. Agencies have been asked to take a 4.75% cut right now. And it's going to be a challenge for us. But what we need to do as a state is, first of all, we have to prioritize where we want to spend our money. We have to look at what businesses we're in, what businesses maybe we shouldn't be in, what services are the most important to deliver, whether it's our seniors, whether it's the, the poor, the elderly, the Medicaid, whether it's keeping our corrections uh, employees on the job, keeping our prisons maintained the way they need to be. We have to prioritize our spending needs of the state and then we have to set those things mm -hmm. forth. You know, I, I think that education is a top funding priority, that uh, are keeping our prisons in good shape are a top priority, roads and highways, Medicare funding, the health care authority, they've had some shortfalls which affects our seniors and our poor and our elderly. You know, making sure that we have the appropriate funding levels and those sources are going to be very important. And then I've got some other little bones I like to pick, and that is, you know, the tourism department. We have lodges that lose money. And, you know, should we be in the business of having lodges that lose money? You're on the campaign trail. What are the voters telling you? Where is, did, are they giving you any feedback in that these are services that we could have cut? Or, or would they support a tax increase? I mean, what's going to be the answer here? What's well, the feedback you're getting? I don't hear anybody wanting a tax increase. <laughs> I'm hearing people want tax reform, but not tax increases. But I, I think people are concerned that we're able to fund education, that we're able to uh, to not lose our teachers to the to the state of Texas. You know, people are concerned about that. They're concerned about the poor and the elderly and the Medicaid cuts. They're concerned about finishing some of the roads and highways that we started in our state. They're concerned about the economy. Okay. Well, let me jump in here and get us to a short break. We're visiting with the Republican nominee for Lieutenant Governor of the State of Oklahoma. Ms. Mary Fowler, we'll be right back. This face catches our attention, but this number will catch the attention of political candidates. 90% of Oklahomans say they will vote for candidates who support early childhood issues. Sadly, not all the candidates have told us where they stand on these issues. Find out which candidates have plans to strengthen families with young children, offer preschool, improve the quality of child care, and ensure school readiness. Young children can't vote. They need you on November 5th. Paid for by Oklahomans for Future Progress. We are C.H. Guernsey & Company. We provide engineering, architecture, and consulting services to clients across the nation and around the world. Our corporate headquarters are located in Oklahoma City, and we have branch offices across the country, including Tulsa. We have provided quality service to clients for nearly 75 years. At Guernsey, we believe in quality work and unconditional client satisfaction. To learn more about C.H. Guernsey & Company, log on to our website at chguernsey.com. St. Gregory's University has been changing the lives of people like me for 125 years. Affordable, private Catholic education, balanced with dedication to community and service, makes St. Gregory special. We're extremely proud of our students' outstanding academic achievements and our nationally ranked athletic teams. It's when you help a student build a future of balance, integrity, and service that you change a life forever. St. Gregory's, a community for life. I enrich our cultural landscape. I help define our quality of life. I am one of 4,000 artists in central Oklahoma who receive support from Allied Arts, this community's united arts organization. I am. I am. I am an Allied artist.
And welcome back. Mick Cornett, Kent Myers on the verdict. We're talking to Republican Lieutenant Governor Candidate Mary Fallon. Kent, where are we now? Well, <clears throat> we were talking about uh, the state of the economy in Oklahoma generally. Uh, do you have some thoughts about what we ought to try to do to develop our economy? Yes, I sure do. And I think in light of the budget shortfalls that we had, in light of the slight recession we had, some of the corporate scandals we've had nationally, in light of the, the stock market even taking a yeah. downturn, and of course telecommunications <clears throat> companies have taken a downturn, all those things have affected Oklahoma and have affected our revenue generation in our state. So now's the time that we must just really accelerate our economic development uh, opportunities or economic development uh, things that we need to do in, in our state and some of those things are we got to remove the obstacles that small businesses face you know we've, we've addressed some of our workers compensation uh, taxes our workers compensation costs in our in our state we've been able to well lower. you headed a commission in that regard you bet in 1998 I had the Fallon Commission which was a one-time commission that took on reforming our workers compensation system we've been able to get our workers compensation costs down by 25 percent over the last five to seven years because of a lot of different reforms and our reform efforts, but we must continue to improve upon our workers' compensation system itself. We need to look at rules and regulations that hamper small business owners. We need to look at obstacles that they face, whether it's health insurance, whether it's property insurance, whether it's tort reform, whether it's the workforce itself, the education system, and we need to look at our tax code. You know, I think our tax code right now holds us back. It encourages some businesses to leave the state of Oklahoma. It encourages retirees to move elsewhere because the 7 percent personal income tax, the 7 percent capital gains tax, and frankly some of our children leave the state of Oklahoma to find jobs elsewhere because our economy is not as strong as it could be because of some of these factors. Well, <clears throat> you mentioned our kids. Let's focus in a little different way on our kids. On your website, you have a statement, I'm paraphrasing now, that our kids deserve a first-class public education system. Uh, do they have one now, or and if not, why not? Well, our kids do deserve a first-class yeah. quality education system, and so do our parents. They deserve that, too. And we must always strive to make sure that we have accountability in our education system, that we have the most effective, efficient education system, and that we're teaching our children what they should learn at great appropriate level. You know, all children should be able to read at great appropriate level. I'll never forget, I, I saw a lady on the news one time, and her daughter was in the eighth grade, and she'd gone to take the eighth grade reading test. And when her test scores came back, she was at the third grade level. And the lady was furious that her daughter had missed being great proficient in all those years. And this, the student was a, a, a straight A student. The mother had participated in the PTA, all the, the classroom meetings that she needed to participate in, but yet the school had let her down. She felt like she'd let her child down because she didn't realize she wasn't at the reading level that she should be. So making sure that our children are great proficient, making sure that our children are even taking advanced courses. Do you know that a low percentage of Oklahoma students take advanced science and advanced math, and we're actually behind the national average in helping our children you know, take that harder coursework, making sure that we have academic rigor, making sure that we're proficient in English and social studies and science and math, and that we encourage our children to take those kinds of courses. How are we going to keep our good teachers from going to Texas or elsewhere? Well, and that's been a real challenge for us, especially with some of the budget problems that we have now. And we have been losing teachers to Texas. We're 44th in the nation in what we pay our teachers right now. And they don't get enough health care benefits either. And, of course, health care costs have been going up even for our teachers. But one of the things we're going to have to do is continue to grow our economy, continue to bring better paying jobs into our state so that we'll have a bigger piece of the pie that we can put into things like education, put into things like a teacher salary, and then once again we're going to have to prioritize our spending in our state. We're going to have to look at what business we're in, what business we shouldn't be in, mm -hmm. and probably have to cut back on some of our government. Let me quickly follow up on that thought about what business we should be in or not. Uh, we of course uh, uh, have our state lodges. We have state parks, state lodges which are basically recreational areas for our citizens. And you and your uh, duties as Lieutenant Governor chair the Tourism Commission. Uh, is, are the state lodges something, uh, a business we should be in now, or in hard times, is that something we need to uh, dispense with? Well, let me just say, first of all, that tourism is a very important industry to our economy. In some uh, different rankings, it's our third largest industry in our state. It brings in over $3 billion into our economy. 
Uh, around 67,000 people in our state have a job related to tourism, so it creates jobs. So it's very important that it be alive, vibrant, and well. And we've done a great job of promoting tourism. In fact, our national advertising campaign just won a top award for the best in the nation, so we're real excited about that. But once again, we've got to have accountability in tourism. We have to have uh, uh, prioritization of where we want to spend our money. And as you mentioned, our state lodges, we have four of them that are currently left in the system in, under the Department of Tourism, and mm -hmm. they lose $2 million a year. Yeah. And if you had a division of your business that was losing $2 million a year, what would you do? Look to shutting it down, I guess. <laughs> you probably look to shutting it down. Yeah. Now, I, I will say that our parks and our resorts are very important to Oklahoma, but our lodges were built in the 1950s. Mm -hmm. And they have about $200 million worth of capital improvement needs. Once again, it's back to priorities of the state. We want to put our money in education, roads and highways, health care, prisons. Tourism's down at the bottom of the totem pole and getting funding. So we don't have the money that we need to be able to have the type of lodges that we would like to have that we can all be very proud of. I advocate that we let the private sector come in and be a partner with us, that the legislature pass legislation that would allow the tourism department to be able to sell them or to be able to bring in private sector partners who could help us with the management of them, and that we quit losing money, that we take that two million and put it somewhere else. Let me ask you this, if, if the legislature would authorize that, do you sense that there would be an interest in the private sector in participating in that sort of thing? You know, I just had a phone call a week and a half ago from a, a gentleman down at Texoma Lake, and he has a, a big resort and a lot of condominium properties and a lot of development, and he called. He's interested in the Texoma Lodge, and so we got him the information, and, and there are opportunities out there. Let me jump in here now yes. and give the <clears throat> governor a chance to, to uh, really say whatever you'd like to say, a couple of minutes to speak to our audience and, and, and tell them why they should or should not vote for Mary Fallon. Well, I, I appreciate that, and I just appreciate the opportunity to be here with you today. And let me just say, as, as we talked about earlier, that the lieutenant governor's position is a very important position because it is, of course, a second executive of the state. If the governor ever leaves the state, then that person's the one that's in charge. You know, I feel like my eight years' experience on the job has been very beneficial to the state. We've worked on big issues, issues that would make a difference to the state, whether it was helping to advocate right to work and get it to other people, whether it was workers' compensation reform, pushing for quality education, pushing for health care reform, government reform, tourism, even bringing in movies to the state of Oklahoma. You know, we've been working on all those issues for the past eight years. I will tell you this, that I do not need on-the-job training that whoever the next governor is that will be ready to be able to help him, to assist him. And in this critical time of our state where we're having a budget shortfall, we need people of experience that know the issues, that know the legislators, that know the agencies, and that will be able to step into the job and make a difference for the state of Oklahoma. So I just appreciate the opportunity to be here with you today and appreciate the opportunity to serve the state of Oklahoma. Yeah. Lieutenant Governor, thank you for coming on. You're welcome. Thank, thank you, you very much. Kent and I'll be back with a final word after this. out the best in each student. That is the simple goal and tradition of Heritage Hall. The focus on the individual shapes the educational experience at Heritage Hall. Each student benefits from small classes, able, dedicated teachers, a solid academic curriculum, and exceptional co-curricular programs of athletics, arts, community service, and other activities, parental involvement, personalized counseling, and the development of responsibility, integrity, and love of learning. If you want education taught with pride, then you want Heritage Hall. In Oklahoma, there are more than 1,600 children waiting to be adopted. They're of all ages, and for many, home has been a source of pain and conflict. They've dreamed of finding a better life and a loving family. Consider adoption. For more information, call 1-877-OK-SWIFT or visit the website www.okdhs.org. Adopt. It may be the toughest job you'll ever love. This face catches our attention, but this number will catch the attention of political candidates. Ninety percent of Oklahomans say they will vote for candidates who support early childhood issues. Sadly, not all the candidates have told us where they stand on these issues. Find out which candidates have plans to strengthen families with young children, offer preschool, improve the quality of child care, and ensure school readiness. Young children can't vote. They need you on November 5th. Paid for by Oklahomans for Future Progress.
wrapping up another edition of The Verdict. Kent, the last two weeks we've met the Republican and Democratic nominees for lieutenant governor. And the lieutenant governor does not have to be from the same political party as the governor. Is that right? No, that, that is correct. And as a matter of fact, we have had uh, George Nye as lieutenant governor and uh, Dewey Bartlett as, as governor. Uh, Republican governor, uh, Democratic lieutenant governor. But, of course, when you go to vote for the president, if you want to vote for the Democratic nominee for president, you have automatically voted for the vice presidential mm -hmm. nominee. That's not the case in Oklahoma, and we are one of few states, there aren't too many, uh, that allow you to pick and choose. Mm -hmm. You can mix and match, if you will. You can take a, a Democratic choice for governor and a Republican choice for lieutenant governor or an independent choice uh, for either. Uh, but you don't have to uh, be bound to the ticket, and that can result in some interesting uh, arrangements, uh, particularly if the, uh, if the uh, hypothetically, the governor and the lieutenant governor being of different parties would not get along or have different policies. Uh, experience has told us that the people that we have elected thus far, however, are really not simply politicians, but statesmen or statespeople. Mm -hmm. uh, they do get along. They do try to work together. And they do compromise and try to do the right thing, and I would have no reason to believe that in this election year we'd see anything different from the people who are on the ballot. Uh, let's do remind our voters that we did have Laura Boyd on last week so that they don't think we're just simply favoring uh, the incumbent. Uh, Laura Boyd, the Democratic uh, candidate, got a chance to give her views, and uh, the incumbent, Mary Fallon, this week had a chance to give her views, and we hope our viewers now have kind of a balanced approach and. Uh, and can make a, an intelligent choice, and we want them to have a chance to do that on our website. That's right. Uh, KSBITV.com, an opportunity to go in there and, and tell people whom they would like to vote for. Yes, and, and on our verdict website. The, the verdict.tv. Yes, yes. <laughs> There'll be a chance uh, on that uh, verdict website to, uh, to pick uh, Lieutenant Governor uh, uh, Fallon or uh, Laura Boyd for lieutenant governor and we would like to know what you think uh, any comment you can go on that website as well by the way and give us comments on this show previous shows or shows that we haven't done that you'd like to see because we love to hear from you your views are important and we take them seriously we have two independent candidates easy million and billy mcguire are also running and the election is november 5th we want to mind everybody to to get out and vote for sure but about 20 seconds left kent your opportunity to address oklahoma well, uh, Oklahoma, keep watching the verdict. Uh, we it, it, we uh, have been going now about 18 months. We've done almost 80 shows. Uh, we love doing the verdict, We but we want to do what you want to see. Uh, we want to uh, present what you want to hear, so let us know. Theverdict.tv, our website. We'll see you next week.